NHRA Drag Racing fan, let's take a look back in review at the Dodge NHRA Indy Nationals presented by Pennzoil. All this on Monday Morning Racer brought to you by strutmasters.com, which is offering air suspension for trucks. Now, a look at the national event next. <laughs> Drag Racing fan, good to have you here on the Monday Morning Racer. Be sure to hit the like button for this video, subscribe to the channel, and check me out elsewhere on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So, first segment we're going to look at is one of my favorites. It's the top story for me from the last national event. That is the Throttle Whack. So this time on Throttle Whack, I want you to know what just happened there with Doug Foley and his warm-up wasn't an intentional Throttle Whack. I say that to say this. Folks, when you're out there in the pits, when you're at any race, keep your head on the proverbial swivel. You never know what's going to be coming by. You never know what might happen. I was told by one driver that some parts from an explosion, in fact, did land in the stands and fans brought those parts by later on. Look, I love racing, but it certainly can be and is in fact a dangerous environment. Always pay attention when you're in the pits. That definitely gave me a little bit of a shock because Doug Foley, they don't use the throttle whack in their tune-up, so whomp, and I was a bit taken back myself, as you can see some of the crew members were. My top story though on this throttle whack segment is a burn down. Yes, we love to see him as fans. This one clocked in at about a minute and 41 seconds. And from what I understand, Chris Thorne and Stevie Fast Jackson, they were about three seconds away from being disqualified. I'm going to let you look at it in all of its length right now here on Monday Morning Racer. <laughs>
Chris takes down Stevie Fast Jackson right there in a close drag race. Gotta love Pro Modified and where it is right now with the many different power adders in the class. Love seeing Stevie jump out there in the supercharged car and Chris Thorne having to play catch up in the turbocharged ride. It makes for some great drag racing, thrilling racing. Who's going to get to the line first? But definitely, I don't think Stevie Fast Jackson is going to stage first the next time he comes up against Chris Thorne. We'll have to see how all of that plays out. And I'm sure there weren't any handshakes down at the other end. It was interesting. Fans in the stands, you could hear them start saying things such as, Go in! Put it in! And there was definitely reaction from the crowd to what was happening. I love seeing a burn down. I love seeing the starter have to get involved and be animated and near the point of disqualification. I like it. I would love to see a buster couch move. Throw the reds on, put them back, have that conversation with them, and bring them up once again to drag race. Look, what's your thoughts on the classic burn down? Do you want to see more of it? Or are you one of those fans that's like, look, Put in the beams, let's drag race. Let's not sit there on the starting line and cause the show to be slowed. What's your thoughts? to end the Groove News. Other top stories from the national event, and this first one was almost my throttle wax story. It was great to see Ron Caps finally win something at Indy. The man has been trying for so long, over 25 years in fact, and here he is, I hope it's a throwing the monkey off his back type of scenario and that he can even march on and win the U.S. Nationals later on this year and really setting another gem in a Hall of Fame career. The man who is only second to John Force, Ron Caps. So let's look at his journey that Sunday and hear from him and Amanda Busick with the NHRA coverage. Team Principal Don Schumacher congratulating Ron Tobler. No way. <laughs> Great reaction for Ron Caps. Someone that knows he won is Ron Caps, and Ron, although it's not the U.S. Nationals, you hoist a Wally right here at the Holy Grail of racetracks for drivers. When you account the struggle over the last two Indy races, how much meaningful is that trophy? Oh man, it's not just that. I mean, I want to I want to melt this down and give it to all those. Uh, Napa people out there that were essential workers through all what we're doing. We, we just want to come out and let people forget about what's going on, put on a show, have fun. But listen, um, this is going to go to my wife. I don't think I've ever given my wife a trophy. We've been coming here 23 years and I've never won at this track. For a driver to say he's won at every track on the circuit, that tells you the talent that is around him. Don Schumacher, Dodge, Pennzoil, especially Napa Auto Parts. Uh, that's a huge accomplishment. I'm so proud to, uh, to drive that race car, but my wife, man, we've been coming to Indy so many years, she lives this dream through me. I get emotional here, but uh, uh, 
she she understands the mood swings when you don't do well and you go home and just uh, it's something we love to do. It's the best job in the world. But our family members that have been coming here for years to be here when I won Indy, I'm so bummed they're not here. But this is going back and it might be a week long party. I can guarantee you that. Woo! Another great story from this national event is another first as well. Terry McMillan and the Emily Ole Top Fuel Dragster. He got the number one spot in qualifying going into Sunday. A team that is definitely showing some great performance. You began to see light of it in Phoenix at the Arizona Nationals. They ran well at Indy 2 and they also performed well at Indy 3 making a final round appearance. I caught up with Terry after his qualifying blast going to number one and got his thoughts on the day and where his team is. That audio now along with footage from qualifying and Sunday itself. Monday morning racer Lee Kraft here in the pits after qualifying here at the Indy Nats. Caught up with Terry McMillan. Congratulations Terry, number one qualifier with a 380. Talk to me about the day and that pass. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, it was uh, it was running good. I knew when I came around the corner, we went number one. Um, I kind of thought we ran a 79, but we went an 80. The car was hauling really early and uh, kind of laid over, dropped a couple holes up top. But, uh, you know, man, our first uh, green hat, you know, something that we've been uh, trying to strive for for a long time. And, and to be able to go number one to give that ability or that reward to Emily as well as my team for all the hard work and uh, effort they put into it. Um, Man, it means the world to me, and it and it's just personally, it's just something that you want to accomplish. So it's you know one you put off your check, uh, off your bucket list, and and now we just got to go win a championship, and life will be great. Life will be great, definitely good right now because you've got this number one qualifying position. Your team, you've had the performance, definitely. For example, I can remember in Phoenix the great run you had there. You had great performance last time we were here at Indy. Terry, what's it going to take to get it all together in your mind and get more wallies? Do the same thing we're doing. You know, we uh, we went up there the last Indy race and uh, we put a different blower on. And it was down 3.8 pounds. Shouldn't have happened. But, uh, you know, that cost us a race. I was out in front early and, uh, you know, it just it ran out of boost and uh, didn't make enough power. So I think we can do the same thing. We got to uh, just double check everything we do, go out there and just keep repeating ourselves. Don't try to create the situation. Just let it take care of itself. This new car that Rob built is uh, phenomenal and it's responding to all the things that we do from the minute I hit the gas to what we do tell it to do down track. So if it keeps doing this thing, we all keep doing our thing, by default it's gonna happen sooner or later. Definitely will, I know y'all are striving towards that. Now you have a motor oil company as your primary sponsor. Look, when you go number one and you're running their oil, what does it tell your other competitors about that product and other racers and why they should get it. Well, you know, I'll tell you, amelie has been around for, you know, over 100 years, in 1903, and they build a great product and they stride to build good products uh, for passenger vehicles, trucks, and all that. But uh, what makes this special here is that there's so many fuel teams here running our oil already and sportsman teams. So uh, it's just a, a compliment to Amelie for what they've done and certainly. You know, let's everybody know they all have the same opportunity we do. You know, this oil is, is good stuff. It uh, it protects this motor. I mean, you look at it, we just beat the, the heck out of it, and it's still happy and ready to go for the next round. So, It's definitely got to be good stuff. Talking about good stuff, man, I love your car and your trailer and the theme, but I've got to ask for myself and others that may not know, where does the Gator theme come from, and why, why do you have it? Well, Emily's based out of Tampa, Florida. So, I mean, there's your sign right there, right? Gators, right? I mean, and then uh, Danny Madden, who's since retired, but uh, we were talking one day and we just started kicking things around and we thought, well, Gator, let's make it a Gator. So we started making decals and half wrapped uh, our funny car back in the day and then that just caught on. And then uh, from then on, we've never looked back. It's always had the Gator theme and, uh, and it's beautiful because, you know, the kids love it. They drag the adults over. Everybody learns more about Amley Oil. And it's just, uh, it's a perfect environment and certainly a great way to showcase the great products they have. It's certainly a fan favorite, one of my favorites. Folks, Terry McMillan here, your number one qualifier. He is certainly hoping he's gonna chomp on the competition tomorrow. Thank you, Terry. Thank you very much, I appreciate it, man. Have a great day, woo! How about a story from ProMod and one that you probably didn't hear about on any of the national broadcasts or anywhere else. So. If you notice, within ProMod ranks, there was the absence of a particular sponsor, 
Strutmasters on a couple of cars. And then all of a sudden it wound up on the side of Mr. Belushi's car that he was racing for Justin Bonds, which hasn't been able to get to the NHRA drag races due to the border being shut down. Mr. Belushi decided to take it upon himself to go over to the Terry Haddock Pit, which is sponsored by Strutmasters on Terry Haddock's Funny Car, asked for some Strutmasters stickers, and he put them on the ProMod. Did not ask Chip Lofton, didn't get any okay for it, just wanted to show from one drag racer to an individual that's been helping drag racing in Chip Lofton, the owner of Strutmasters, hey, we want to say thank you. And they put the stickers on the car for Saturday and they were on the car for Sunday in eliminations. Folks, I want you to understand something. In drag racing, obviously it's got to have sponsorship. You got to have people helping these individuals get to the track. Well look, it's not always the sponsor's fault. It's not always the racer's fault when you see a sponsor leave a team. Sometimes there are just contractual disagreements. Sometimes there are things agreed upon. Sometimes it's only a one or two race deal. We live in a day and time where sponsorships do not go on for years and years and years. That's just the nature of the beast. And this year has been a very challenging one for all sponsors because they sponsor for ROI, return on investment. And if sponsors aren't getting that, there's no point to sponsor whatsoever. So, Mr. Belushi, look, thank you for uh, saying thank you to Chip Lofton, who has done so much for the sport of drag racing, and even myself, the Monday morning racer. Folks, strutmasters.com, keeping a lot of cars out there racing. And let me say this. Whenever you see a sponsor leave from a car, or it's no longer on the side of the car, do not always think that it is the sponsor that did it. Look, these racers, they're great guys, but some of them lose a sponsor for good reason. So keep that in mind. There's always two sides to a story. They usually meet in the middle. It's not always the sponsor's fault. I have definitely learned that in the conversations I've had with sponsors, with partners, that when you see a sponsor leave, it's not always up to them. Sometimes it's on the racer. Keep that in mind. favorite classes period mountain motor pro stock they were on tap to view at this nhra national event love these cars cars with over 820 cubic inches 220 something miles per hour in the quarter mile and you have some great personalities and diversity still within the class you had a Dodge there, you had Mustangs there, you had Camaros there, and all going fast as door slammers. It's great to see, and they just have a distinctness to them from the NHRA Pro Stockers that are 500 cubic inches. Well, Johnny Placino, even though JR Carr was number one qualifier and has a bad fast new hot rod, Johnny Placino in the Strutmasters.com Mustang, he wins in Mountain Motor Pro Stock for their first outing with the NHRA in 2020. I got on the phone with Johnny. Hey, listen to him and myself, the Monday Morning Racer, as you see him in qualifying and round by round on Sunday to his win.
Monday Morning Racer here, and on the phone we've got Johnny Placino, a man that's performing well, definitely, in the TDRA, but for, but for the first Mountain Motor Pro Stock race of the NHRA, he comes away with a win. So, Johnny, talk to me about your Sunday and picking up a Wally. Yeah, we stayed consistent and, and stayed the course. Um, that's kind of what Sunday entailed for us. Uh, we had a good car on Saturday, and we, we didn't want to go out and make any mistakes, and um, I felt if I can, if I can drive well and we can just put up good solid numbers that, uh, we'd have a real good chance of hoisting a Wally Sunday afternoon. So we did just that. Uh, we recorded low ET of, uh, first round, um, second round, we went out and made another good run, backed up our 635 in the heat. Uh, and we missed it a little bit, uh, in, in the clutch department on, uh, in the final, but, Fortunate enough, I was able to get the clutch put off the, uh, you know, off early, and hey, got the win. You certainly did. Let me ask this, Johnny. So all the rave here lately has been J.R. Carr with that brand new car that he's had, and it's had a lot of speed and some low ETs. Uh, you go out there, you qualify third, but as you mentioned, you all had a low ET in a round, and you pick up the wind. So. What kind of statement do you think that makes from your team to all the other teams, no matter new car, old car, new driver, old driver, that, well, Johnny Placino is on the scene? Oh, yeah, we're here to play. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're definitely, we definitely feel like we are one of the top contenders right now in this class. A uh, ton of respect for JR Carr and their team. They've put a lot of time and effort into their program, and it showed. Uh, they have an excellent race car in right now. Frank's doing a wonderful job tuning it uh and and they've shown they've shown their abilities uh that being said we are a confident group we're confident in what we have going on and uh we feel we can beat anyone on every given any given day low et and top speed doesn't win you the race um so we go out there could we try and get a little bit more aggressive and pick up a number or two here and there yeah but we want to go out there we want it to be a consistent car and right now we feel like we're, we're tough to beat you know i think we're we're, if we're not the toughest car out there to beat right now, we are one of them. So um, if we just keep putting up tough, tough numbers, we're going to make you come out. We're going to make you get after us and then try and beat us. And, uh, you know, hey, props to my crew. Uh, we had some short turnarounds, and uh, we got the job done, stayed the course, and, hey, <laughs> felt good. I'm, hey, winning always feels good. Y'all certainly know how to celebrate, and you're certainly coming accustomed to winning this year. A total of three wins on the year when you throw in the PDRA wins. And right now you're leading NHRA points. You're leading PDRA points. So a stellar year for Placino Racing already. Johnny, look, congratulations, folks. Johnny Placino, your winner at the Dodge NHRA Indy Nationals presented by Pennzoil. Class in session. Let's take a look at the classes that were participating at the Dodge NHRA Indy Nationals presented by Pennzoil, namely Top Fuel, Funny Car, Pro Stock, and Pro Stock Motorcycle. In Top Fuel, the winner, Steve Torrance over the number one qualifier, Terry McMillan. And I want you to know, Terry McMillan with the Indy 2 performance making a semifinal round appearance, and this final round appearance put all the points together and the newfound performance. He's moved sixth into the points. Definitely, that Gator team is starting to chomp on the competition. In points, though, still leading, it is Doug Coletta. Not by a full event win, though. It's dipped down to the 80-point marker range. In second, Steve Torrance. Third, Leah Pruitt hanging tight for her best performance to possibly gain a NHRA Top Field Championship this year in 2020. Hey, I got on the phone another Top Fuel competitor, Justin Ashley. So here's that conversation and a look at his weekend at this particular event. Monday Morning Racer here with Justin Ashley. Justin, you had a decent weekend for Indy 3 as the numbers keep growing on these Indianapolis events at Lucas Oil Raceway Park. Gotta ask first, though, notice during warm-up that you were actually shaking your head no. You never want to see the driver shaking his head no during warm-up before going out for a qualifying run. So what was going on during that time? Yeah, I think that right there was 
a prime example of why we want the car before we bring it to the starting line to make a pass. Uh, for us, it was one of those situations where everything went really well in the warm-up, except that when I went to put the car back into forward, it wasn't going. And I could just tell that something was not right. Uh, the gears were not aligning for me to be able to do that. So uh, I just kind of sent the signal over to crew chief Aaron Brooks, and we shut the car off, made sure that we got the problem resolved and fixed. And uh, just like that, we were all ready to go up there for Q1. Y'all definitely were ready. Q1 was your best pass in qualifying, got you in the show handedly, and got past first round on to E2, and then there was some mechanical failures. Well, not just some. It was really a mechanical failure of epic proportions. I think the crew said that all eight rods were thrown out of that thing. You absolutely destroyed it. Yeah, that's uh, not ideal. It's not exactly what we wanted to do. We kicked all eight rods out of it and, and destroyed the block right there in E2. And when you're racing long enough, things like that are going to happen. Uh, it's just part attrition. And, uh, you know, it's just part of being a team that wants to go out there and win and run hard. And I know crew chief Aaron Brooks and the rest of the team is going to look long and hard and figure out why that happened. But no matter what, it's a learning process. It's, it's all about learning for us. And, and for me, I'm still a rookie driver, so I'm trying to learn behind the wheel and and as a team, we're all coming together, and I'm just proud of this group of guys. They've worked hard over the last few weeks in preparation for this event, and they worked hard throughout the event, the event and I have no doubt that uh, they'll continue to work hard, and we'll be ready to go when it's time for the U.S. Nationals Labor Day weekend. So you're a rookie driver, yes, only seven, eight events into your NHRA top fuel career, but you do have before you a possibility of being a contender for the points championship with your Davis Motorsports group and though that wasn't something I know that y'all planned on going for at the first part of the season it's out there now do y'all seriously take a look at it now with all the schedule changes and running right there in Indianapolis with all the COVID-19 that's hadn't happened here in 2020. Uh, we are starting to seriously look at the points uh, and the point structure and where we stand. When the season started, uh, running for a championship was not something that was top priority for us. We wanted to run a 12-race schedule and give ourselves an opportunity to win every time we hit the racetrack. But with the unpredictability of the season and the way it's gone, it's something that we've ended up keeping a close eye on. And we see now that we're sitting fifth in the points and we'll continue to monitor it. But for us, it's really just about taking one race at a time uh, taking one round at a time and one qualifying session at a time and take it from there. And we're fortunate enough to to have a group that's that's really fantastic. I have the utmost confidence in this group. I know that they're a championship-winning group, and we have championship-winning marketing partners on board, uh, Strawmasters.com, Menards, AutoShock, Kato. The list goes on and on. So with the kind of group that we have, uh, I know that we can continue to do big things in the sport and, and for the rest of the year. So we'll certainly keep a close eye on it moving forward. Folks, that's Justin Ashley, the NHRA's top rising star in top fuel. I'm the Monday Morning Racer. Justin, thank you for your time. Thank you. You're the best. I appreciate it. On to Funny Car. As you know, Ron Caps wins this event at Indy breaking a streak, hopefully again, as I said earlier, throwing the monkey off his back. He did it through stiff competition. His fellow Don Schumacher racing teammates, they are still performing well and strong. But in the final round, as you notice, it was J.R. Todd making it to the final round, picking up some performance. Matter of fact, he jumps to sixth in the points. That team was needing a good day. They got it at this national event. The points right now, which are tight, looks like this. Tommy Johnson Jr. first, second. Fast Jack Beckman, third, Mac Hagen. And even though Ron had had an abysmal year, really, up to this point, he's now fourth in points with a victory at this event at Indy. Pro 
Pro Stock right now is definitely the KB Racing versus Elite Motorsports show. Matter of fact, in points, it's Elite Motorsports, KB Racing, Elite Motorsports, KB Racing. This is how it looks in points right now. First place is Jeg Coughlin Jr. Second, Jason Line. Third, Erica Enders. Fourth, Greg Anderson. And rounding out the top five, it is Alex Laughlin. The first car that is not KB Racing or Elite Motorsports is Chris McGahey in the sixth position. The final round was interesting. It was uncle versus nephew with Jeg Coughlin Jr. versus Troy. Let's take a look at it. Right here. So there you have it. Jig picks up another Wally and does so in his retirement tour and he goes away leading the points. Pro Stock Motorcycle was out for only their second race of the 2020 year and you saw in the final round an individual who had not won a race in a long time, though she's definitely accustomed to winning. In fact, it had been since, well, we were racing at English Town that Angel Sampe had won a race. And in the other lane, Chris Bostick, who had never won a NHRA national event, and that remained so as Angel picked up the Wally after two events, the points in Pro Stock Motorcycle, Ryan Ayler winning for the first time for the first race here in 2020. He still holds the points lead. Angel Sampe jumps to second. Matt Smith holds on to third. Now, there were plenty of other classes participating at this Dodge NHRA Indy Nationals presented by Pennzoil, but I cannot cover them all. I was running around as fast as I could and getting as much footage as I could in the stands all day nearly. A lot more interviews I wanted to get, a lot more coverage I wanted to get for you, just could not get it all. But I do want to say congratulations again to Johnny Placino winning in Mountain Motor Pro Stock. Congratulations to Jonathan Gray winning his second career win in Pro Modified. And keep a lookout on Monday Morning Racer because there will be standalone videos for those classes to come soon. So folks, thank you for watching this in review by the Monday Morning Racer. And I want to leave you with a fan tip. If you are in the Brownsburg area and you're looking for a place to get a sweet treat, some coffee, possibly for breakfast, check out Jack's Donuts. They're a chain in the area and they put out some stellar donuts and some good coffee. I highly recommend Jack's Donuts. Maybe even get a dozen for a crew and say thank you for being out and racing. Or get a dozen and go in the stands and pass some out. Might not be that acceptable in this, these COVID days, but people would sure love it and enjoy a good donut from Jack's Donuts. Check them out. I wonder if they'll sponsor Jack Beckman. That would probably work out pretty good. Take care. Until next time, God bless and keep the pedal to the metal.